Well, as we mentioned yesterday in our Wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast, uh, we're looking at worship, but we're kind of backing off a little bit to uh, talk about the God we worship. If we're not worshiping the true God and understanding Him and knowing Him, then our, our worship will, will not be what it ought to be. And so uh, we're going back to J.I. Packer's book, Knowing God, and that's one of the great classics. Uh, I would put that alongside uh, The Knowledge of the Holy by Tozer as two of the more modern books written uh, that are accessible, understandable, very, very helpful, that talk about the worship of the Lord. There are others, but those are two of the great classics. But he said as toward the end of his book that there's some conditions, summarizing his conditions on what we need to do to know God. And uh, we're, we're looking at some of those. Yesterday, uh, we looked at two of those. And uh, today, we're going to follow up by looking at uh, a couple more. So go to Romans chapter 6 with me. He says, the, the next one is consider yourself alive to God. Verse 11 of Romans 6 says, so consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Actually, this is, is a two-parter. On the one hand, you need to consider yourself dead to sin. Uh, that is not that we're, we're sinless, obviously, but that we no longer want to live for sin. Sin doesn't control us any longer. Sin is not our master. Uh, we're dead to that. That's, that's the past. Uh, we don't want that to dominate our lives. But on the positive side, we're alive to God in Christ Jesus. So death is replaced by life. Uh, the, dead, the, the, the life that we had once before in sin is gone. That master is gone. It's been replaced by a new life. That new life is found in, uh, in Christ Jesus. We're alive to God in Christ Jesus. So now our new master is the Lord himself. We desire to serve him. We desire to follow him. And if we're going to know God, that should be our heart condition. That should be our great passion, to be alive to the Lord, to live out all that God wants us to live out in him. Now, a fourth condition is the rejection of false values, according to Packer. Going over to Colossians chapter 3, uh, let's, uh, let's start with... Uh, Verse 2, set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you died and your life has been hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is manifested, then you also will be manifested with him in glory. This is a wonderful section of scripture that goes right to our minds, how we think. So what we, how, what we, what we consider, what we meditate on, what we ponder on, the things that come to our thinking when we don't have to think about uh, work or kids or whatever, these are these are things that really set the agenda in our lives. And so he says here, we need to reject false values. Uh, we're setting our mind on things above, those where true values are, where Christ himself is, rather than setting our mind on things on the earth, which doesn't mean that we're not concerned about paying our bills and feeding our families and having a house and all the things that go along with living. As a matter of fact, the Lord has given us every good gift to enjoy, and we can appreciate the many physical, tangible things that God gives us in our lives, and we should. Let's not, uh, let's not go to some aesthetic uh, idea that these things are evil or that uh, material is evil, such as the old Stoics used to teach. But instead, uh, we, we see in this passage of Scripture that our lives are not shaped by the values of this world. Our lives are shaped by the values of another world, of the world where God is. And it says in verse 4, When Christ who is our life is manifested, then you also be manifested with him in glory. And so he's saying here that, that one day we are going to be like Christ. One day he's going to return. And uh, Christ now, right now, is our life. That's the way it ought to be. That's what should shape our values. That's what should shape the way we live how we think, how we spend our money, all the things that really matter should be shaped by the fact that Jesus Christ is our life. But, but he says when, when Christ, who is our life, is manifested, that was when he shows up, when the Lord comes back, then we're going to be manifested with him in glory. We're going to be seen for who we really are and what we really are because we're going to be in him. So he's saying here then is this, if we're going to worship the, this God of glory, then in essence, our values must be shaped by this God of glory. And Jesus Christ must, in fact, be our life. He must be our everything. He must be at the hub of everything we do and think and, and, and all of our values and, and our actions. 
this is a call that God gives to us. Now, we know we're in process. That we're, that we're never where we want to be in these kinds of things. But we want to be growing in these areas and growing more and more towards our life in Christ. One day we'll be with him. One day we'll see him as he is. One day we'll be, uh, be uh, like him in a very unique way. We should look forward to that. And that should shape our knowledge of God and our worship of that God. Let's look at another one or two of Packer's ideas tomorrow.